uh, today uh, we'll be presenting chapter 21 of the book, uh, which is about uh, joints. Uh, but though I would like to briefly comment uh, uh, for the benefit of those that will be watching uh, this video uh, on YouTube, that uh, this is the R for Data Science online learning community, which is uh, we come as a group, which we read uh, the R for PS book. But for today, we'll be looking at chapter 21 of the book. And chapter 21 of the book is about is about uh, joints. So for, for the learning objective, for the learning objective of this book, for the learning objective of this book, we, we are going to recognize uh, the families of verbs uh, for, for working with relational data. We are also going to use keys. And this case, we will look at primary, foreign, and surrogate uh, to identify uh, relations uh, between tables. Then we are going to look at, we are going to use mutating join uh, to combine uh, related tables because uh, when working with a uh, different set of data, we'll be looking at different tables. So we are going to see how we can use uh, mutating joins to join uh, those data set together. Then we are going to also look at uh, how to use uh, the filtering joins uh, to remove observation uh, from a table. We're also going to recognize uh, common problems uh, with joins. Then we are going to set operations uh, to combine or filter uh, tables uh, down. So that is the learning objective of what we'll be going through today in our discussion for chapter 21 of the book. Uh, so for the first part of the book, the intro talk about uh, uh, multiple tables of a data frame are called uh, relational data because when working uh, with doing a data analysis, there are likely steps that we will have data that are in different tables. So we need to look at how we can bring this data that are linked into in different table, how we can join them by setting uh, unique uh, variable, unique keys that are in R. But there are three, uh, the book mainly discuss that there are three families of verbs uh, designed to work uh, with uh, relational data. The first, uh, we're looking at uh, mutating joints and under the mutating joints, uh, then we can get the left join, we can get the, the inner join, we can get the right join and the full joints. These are all, this all falls under the mutating joints, which helps in creating new columns. We also, we also be going to be looking at the filtering joints, which are the semi joints and the anti joints which we can use to narrow down our table to a, a certain value. Then we are go also going to wrap up looking at the set operation, which treats uh, observation as if they are set elements. So for the first uh, part of this book, uh, for the, this other section, uh, we'll be making use of the NYC flight 13 uh, package. And this NYC flight 13 package contain data set of about uh, flights, how to make uh, custom tables uh, with uh, different uh, data sets. So we have, we have the NYC flight 13. So we are calling the airlines uh, from our namespace. Then we also have uh, the airports and we also have I'm sorry for that. Okay, so we also have uh, the planes, and we also have uh, we also have uh, the weather. So this these are the five different tables that we have from this NYC flight uh, 13 uh, data set. So so how are these data related together? They do this called that the flight connects to planes via a single variable call tail number because in flights and planes they have this variable called tail number which we can which is a key in which we can use to link these two tables are together so we also have flights which connects to airline through a, a this key called carrier we also have flights which connects to to airports in two ways via what origin and also destination 
We also have flights which connect to weather via origin. So in this origin, we have the year, month, day, and hour. But if we do visualize uh, this, uh, this same data, if we can uh, we can look at it uh, visually uh, to see how to see how this, uh, these uh, tables are connected to each other. Initially, we have airports, and this airport has what we call FAR, which is the destination, which is the origin. We can link this to the origin that is in the flight data set. We also have the data of planes, which we have a column called tail number, and we can link that column to the tail number that can be found in the flight uh, data sets. We also have another table of weather, and this weather we have year, month, day, hour, and origin. So this same information, we can link it to the flight data set because in the flights we also have year, month, day, hour. So we can join either the flights or the weather, we can join those two tables uh, together. We also have the airlines. So the airlines have a carrier information and this carrier can also be linked to the carrier that, that is found in the flights, that can be found in the flight, uh, that can be found in the flight uh, data set. So I don't know if there are any comments because this is just a, a visual representation of uh, tables and it shows us how we can easily uh, connect this table to one hour key column in which they have, in which we can connect them to each other by that uh, unique uh, keys. So for the next part, for the next part, uh, they were discussing about the key and they asked what is a key? A key is a variable that uniquely identifies an observation. So we, are, we can have a different tables. So each of those tables, they can have a unique key that we can use to identify a uh, different observation and we can join those different tables by that uh, unique key. And they do explain that what is a relation and they say that it is where the primary key and the corresponding foreign key in another table form a relation. Maybe I can have a data set, maybe the flight, it has a primary key of maybe destination. If I'm able to link that to another destination column that can be found in another data set. So that is what uh, they do explain as a relation. Relationship means that this table has something to do in common with another table. So we can now bring uh, those two tables together and we can join uh, those two tables by that specific uh, unique, uh, unique column. So here they said, what are the key types of keys? They have a primary key, uniquely identifies an observation in its own table. So for example, we have planes, tail number is a key, is a primary key because it uniquely identify each plane in the planes uh, table. Because this is a primary key, why a foreign key is unique, uniquely identify an ob observation in another table. So we have two types of key. We have the primary key. Primary key, we use it to identify observation in one table. Why foreign key is when we want, we have this same observation in this table, then we want to link that observation to another observation that can be found in another table because that table, we can call that table a fault. That is where we refer to it as, uh, they refer to it as a, foreign, as a foreign key. So for example, we have flight tail number is a foreign key for the planes table because it appears in the flight table where it matches each flight to a unique plane. Uh, we can also have a surrogate key is a custom made key where it is possible to identify unique 
information such as the number of rows in a table, and it is made if a table lacks a primary key. So here they do explain types of data, uh, of data relations in the book uh, that we can find. There are different types of data relations. Uh, they explain the one to many. The one to many, they said is a flight as one plane, but each plane has many flights. It has one plane, but each of those planes, we are going to find more than many flights can be found in that. Uh, then we have the many to many. This one is between the airlines and airports. And each airline flies in many, in many airports. Each airport hosts many airlines. So that is why they call it the many uh, to many. So the special cases in which they, they discuss one to one, which is one to one and many to one. These are special cases of data uh, of data uh, relations in which they were they do explain uh, in the chapter. So here, uh, here is where we now go in uh, deeper, where we are go going to explore uh, the mutating joints. And this mutating joint, just as I said, we can we can have left join, right join, full join, and also inner join. These are all these all fall under the mutating join to combine variable from two tables. So we can use it in combining variable that are coming from two tables, but those two tables, they must have a unique. Join and left join is going to keep all the observation in table X. Is going to keep all of Sorry, my internet, my internet was not uh, stable. Hello, Tim, are you there? Yeah, yeah, still here. Okay. So I said, uh, sorry, my I have an internet issue. I have to rejoin again. So left join keeps all the observation in X. So all the observation in X will be retained, but it's only going to retain observation in Y that uh, still that can be found in X. So right join is going to keep all the observation in table Y then it's only going to retain observation in table X that has a match with table Y. Y full join will keep all the observation in both table X and table Y. So it's going to retain all observation. So how do we understand uh, these joints? So we have, we have the inner join, which is of X and Y. So it's just going to be the intersection of this, so this is the inner joint. It's going to keep all observation, all the intersection that is has to do with the observation that can be found in both X and Y. But when we have full join, full join retains everything. That is why we can see this circle. Every portion is being uh, shaded. While left join is going to retain only observation that that uh, that is found in X then anyone that has matches with, that can be found in Y that have matches, that can match those observations in X, you will also return. The same thing, uh, the same thing goes uh, uh, with the right, with the right adjoint. So this, uh, this is also a pictorial, pictorial of both these X. This is why we can do, we can, we can now, join those data sets. So here they were using an example of flights and then the slice row one to row 100 that can be found in the slide flights data sets. And then they select origin, year and month. And then they join using the inner join. Within the inner join, they select weather, origin, temperature, wind direction, and they are joining by 
they are joining by the origin. So this is also going to show this warning in inner join, select whether each row one of X matches multiple rows. If multiple matches are expected, set multiple is equals to all to silence uh, this one. And so R is going to return this warning body fee. Put this argument that multiple is equals to all in that case, uh, we are not uh, we are not going to get this uh, warning again. It, it will just join. It's just going to join uh, the tables, and we are going to get uh, our our results in that case. So these are the key. This value underscore x value underscore y. When we try to join uh, these uh, two uh, these two table using the the inner the inner join, but for outer join, for outer join, a left join keeps all observation in x, a right join keeps all observation in y, while a full join keeps all observation in both x and y. So this is like a left join. This when we have two when we have two table, we want to use the left join. This is going to be the resulting table. So when we want to do a right join between two table, uh, this is going to be the result and output. Then when we want to do the full join, full join, just as I said, is going to keep all observation that can be found in both X and Y is going to be retained. So this is uh, going to be uh, the resulting output. So for left join, we can also see this. We are doing left join. We want to join the airlines by by carrier. So once we run that, uh, we are going to have this table. We can also use motets where we have flights, and then we select we select the column we are interested in, and then we also select we also drop two columns, and then we use motets creating a new column called name, which is equals to airlines, dollar sign name, match carrier. This is airline dollar sign carrier. So this is now going to be a new column in which we have added, which is United Airline Inc. United Airline Inc. Delta Airline Inc. So, but when we do the right join, when we do the right join, we can have weather and then Select, we select the column we are interested in, right join by the airport table by origin is equals to file. This one, we are having two keys. And those two keys we are having from both the weather and the airport data. Those two keys, they are having this different column names. They are having different column name. One is named origin, one is named file. File is still origin. So in order for us to join by those two keys that have different name, uh, we need to use by, create a character vector, you use string origin uh, is, equals, uh, is equals to far. But alternatively, alternatively, we can also join these tables using the join by, we can also join this table uh, using this new argument, uh, which is join, join by, we can also do this. In this case, we don't need to, we don't need to surround it with the quotes. We don't need to surround it with the quotes. We can just say join by, we create a character vector. We say origin is equals to far, which is, uh, must be empty argument, uh, I think, okay. So we can also join, use this argument where we say join by, then we said origin is equals to far. It will still give us uh, the same output like, it is still going to give us the same output like this. It's still going to give us the same output. You just delete this character vector, just say join by, origin is equals to far, but when I look at the documentation of this function, 
uh, when I look at the documentation of the join by, join by specific specification, join by construct a specification that describe how to join two tables using a small domain specific language. The result can be supplied as by as the by argument to any of the join functions such as left join. So this one, this the, this join by I think is more efficient because it, it becomes make it easier uh, for us uh, to read our our code. Make it easier uh, for us to read the code. So we also have the full join. Just as I said earlier, the full join is going to retain all uh, the observation of both that can be found in both X table A, X and also table Y is going to be retained when we are using uh, the full join. So there we have the airport and then we select name, latitude and longitude and then we use the full join where we have airlines, then we use the by argument. We are joining by name because we can find name in both airports and also the airlines table. So we can join uh, those two tables and it's going to give us uh, these outputs. But there are some instances uh, where when we are trying to join different table together using a key, uh, we can have duplicate keys. So how do I handle this? What are table with duplicate keys? So we have this table, which has X1, X2, X3, X4. We have one, two, two, one. We have one, two, Y1 and Y2. So this, when we have duplicate keys, what R is going to do is that it's going to be value underscore X, where we have X1, X2, X3, X4. Then these are the key. The key is going to be one, two, two, one. Then we are going to have value underscore Y. Under value underscore y, we have y1, y2, y2, and y1. So that is what R is going to do. It's going to match where they have matches. So it's going to retain everything value underscore x, value underscore y, and also the key uh, to link uh, those tables together. But they do explain in the book that both tables have duplicate keys because we can see we have key one, two, 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 two three value underscore X and also uh, value underscore uh, Y after the join uh, the two table. So, but we can define the key columns, uh, the key column by using this by is equals to key, which is uh, within string. That is we are using the by argument, but if we are not using the by argument, if we are using the join by argument, then in that case, we don't need to put it, but we just say this column is equals to this other column. Then R is going to know how to join uh, those keys together. But we can also use the by set it to null uses all variables that appear in both tables. Or we can say by is equals to X uses only one specific variable. By is equals to a character vector a is equals to B, uses a name character vector. So we can join it, those two uh, tables are uh, using a name uh, character vector. So uh, in this other part, they combine, they compare the dplyr join, mutating join, and that's of the base R. But using the dplyr uh, is more efficient than the base R because the dplyr code using is uses uh, the SQL syntax and the code is very is ten is ten times faster uh, than using the base R equivalent. So this is how we use the inner join using the dplyr package. This is the alternative way of using the inner join when we want to use the base R equivalent. This is how we use uh, the left join uh, using dplyr. The then for the base R, we can use say match x, y, all dot x equals to true, which is going to retain all table x, then it's going to 
look for where they have matches in Y, then it's going to join by that. This is the right join, the best R, this is the best R syntax, this is full join, and this is the best R implementation. So, so this is a deep R code, this same, then this is how this is implemented when we want to use the structured uh, query uh, language, which, which is SQL. This is how we can say select from X in our join while using Z. So this is uh, the SQL uh, equivalent. So I don't know if there are any comments. I think that is all I have for the mutating join section before we go into the next parts of the book. Okay, if there is none, I can proceed. So these other parts, uh, we'll be looking at uh, the filtering join and within this filtering join, we have uh, two set of functions in which we'll be exploring, which is the semi join, and also the, the, the anti-join. So the semi-join, uh, we use it when we want to keep all observations that we find in X that have a match in Y. So when we are interested in all observations in which we found in table X that have matches in table Y. So we can use a semi-join in that syntax uh, to see how this table is related to this table where do we have unique matches that join, we can join, use semi-join to join it, and it's just going to return uh, the result. But anti-joins drops all observation in X that have a match in Y. So anti-join is like a opposite of uh, semi-join. So what is very useful that we know when we use which, when we are working with different uh, table in R, because in data analysis, definitely we are going to have different data sets, they can be in different files, but we can join all those data sets together by set, certain unique keys, which we can use in connecting them before we start our uh, analysis uh, process. So for the semi-join, uh, this is a pictorial where we have X1, X2, X3, these are the key one, two, three, we have one, two, four, Y1, Y2, Y3, so we can just look for, uh, we, we can use semi-join, keeps all observation in X that has matches in Y. We can see here we have X1 and one key. So the key is just going to return uh, one and two. Here is X1 and also X2 because we have one here, we have one here. We have, we have one, so it's just going to match because one appears, uh, one appears, uh, it appears, uh, we have one, and two, so, and this we have X1 and also X2. So once we join, so we can look at top destination. Here we have flights and then we count all the destination where we sort equals true, and then we look for head, which is going to give us the first, uh, the first ten, the first ten rows. So, and we save that and stop destination. Then we uh, we go back to the flight data set again, and then we want to do semi join by top destination. This keep all observation in X that have a match in Y all observation in X, which is X is the flight, uh, Y is the top destination. So it's just going to return all the observation in X that have matches in Y. And that is the result in which, uh, in which we, are, we are going to get in this. So we can also see that the filtering joints uh, never duplicate rows like mutating joints do. So it does not duplicate any rows. Anywhere we have duplicates, I think it's going to drop it, but mutating join at times, it can't uh, have duplicate uh, rows. So, but in this case, there is no duplicated rows in this case. 
So we can have this table and this table, um, the opposite of uh, semi-join is what anti-join. So anyone that has matches uh, is going to drop it. So we have flights and then we can say anti-join by planes by tail number. So we are joining by tail number and then we are counting tail number where we sort to be true. This keeps all rows that don't have a match. So all rows that does not have a match is what is going to return. It's going to return the first 10 rows and it also is going to show us that this we have 712 more rows because uh, this is a tables. Tables will always return uh, the, first, uh, the first 10 rows. So, but we can see this uh, uh, using uh, this visual, so which is the anti joins, which shows that key, we have key three, which is variable underscore X, which is X3. So using this is uh, the, the, the anti join uh, implementation. So some more things to consider. So, um, so they do explain also in the book that uh, when I was going through that, uh, there are some instances that we want to use either the filtering joints uh, or the mutating joints to join different uh, tables uh, together. Uh, we can run into problems. So, but how do we resolve this? So we can identify the variables that form the primary key in each table. So once we have done that, we check for missing values. Then we check that your foreign keys, that is a key that we can find in another table match primary key in another table using the anti join. So we can use the anti join to make sure that is done. Then we set for some operations. Uh, this uh, types two table or verb set operation. We can use the intersect of for X and Y, which returns only observation in both X, X and Y. We can also use the union for X and Y. This return unique, unique observation uh, in both X and Y. We can also use the set diff function for both X and Y, which returns observations in X, but not, uh, but not of the observation uh, that we can find uh, in Y. So, so I think uh, I think uh, that is all I was able to to cover in this chapter. So this chapter, uh, let me go back uh, to the main book. Uh, what I was able, let me go back to the main book. Oops. Okay, so what I was able, this, there were some exercises, I think. Uh, okay, full join, we have done this. So what we are able to cover in this chapter is that we have seen that uh, how to use uh, the mutating joints uh, to join different uh, tables uh, together using uh, the, using our, our foreign key that we can find in another table where we can link those table uh, together. We can, we also learn, um, we also learn how to use, uh, how to use the filtering, how to use uh, the filtering join to join tables, uh, uh, to join uh, the table uh, together when, uh, when, when working in R. So I think uh, that is all I was able to cover. I don't know if Tim uh, did it or anyone else wants to jump in or if there is any questions based on what we discuss. No, I, th I think that's fine. Thank you, all your family. Okay, so I think 
I'm, I'm okay, sir. Okay. I think we meet again. We meet again uh, next week where we'll be looking at uh, spreadsheets. We look, meet again next week at uh, the same time. We'll be looking at a uh, spreadsheet. I don't know if anyone, if anyone is interested in presenting uh, that chapter, you should just sign up. I think it, this one, uh, this one is a, also a learning of, because we'll be looking at spreadsheets, how to deal with Excel file, how to import the Excel file, how to import the CSV file. I think it's very uh, interesting. I don't know if Tim will want to jump in for that chapter. Um, yeah, I think the, the only thing is I'm on holiday next week, so I'm not 100% I'll be able to make it. I'm hoping I'll still be able to come. But um, yeah, I, I, I don't know if I want to volunteer for that one just in case I can't make it. No, if you can't make it, I will present the chapter. Just inform me in the Slack. Then I will make, okay. I will prepare for it. Okay, so if, if I yeah, if I can make it, then I'm happy to, to present a session if you want. Yes, yes, yes. Yep, okay. Then if you cannot present, then I will take up the chapter next week, Monday. I will leave the discussion. Okay, oh, that's great. Thank you very much. Okay, so we'll see you the same time uh, next week. Thank you all for joining today. Yeah, thank you very much. Bye.